Hey everybody, how are we doing today? It says Wednesday, and welcome to the live stream. We're running a little bit behind today, but that's not a big deal. So, hey, um, if you've never been here before, this is the Stinky Robot Art live stream on this channel. We draw for a few hours each day and come from start to finish and come up with a new piece of art. Do hope you'll join me, watch the video, and Instead of grabbing a pencil and a piece of paper and drawing along, join us here on the channel as we create art daily. Wait one second here. We're still slightly getting set up for today's live stream. I haven't quite got the paper all prepped up. We're going to work on that real quick while we're getting things going. While waiting on people to show up. Make a few adjustments. Had a few things to have going on today, so we're starting to stream it a little bit late. I want to thank everybody who's been going over the website, and uh, I made a few people buying some stuff there out the store, which is fantastic. If you're one of those people who just purchased something from me, then I'm working today, getting all that packaged up and shipped out to you. So pretty excited about that. Get your new art on your walls. Gotta tape this board up real quick. If you've never seen the way I prepare these, these uh, go over that real quick. I use, let's see, I'm using this. This is really good watercolor paper. It's just a Canson watercolor paper, watercolor board actually. Nice thick stock watercolor board. Holds the ink really well and it doesn't warp the paper. Yeah, you got a nice. But I will give it a light tape up. Now you can use the really expensive artist tape if you want to, or you can run out to a big box store and pick up just some 3M blue painter's tape. Now when you're taping it off, you don't want to push real, real hard on it though. If you do decide to tape up yours. On all of these live stream art pieces that I do, I actually am leaving room for the mats. By the end of the week, these will be up on my website also for sale. They'll be sold in blind backs fashion, so when you purchase one, you won't know which live stream piece you got. So if you haven't seen that video, hopefully you'll go back and watch it when it, when it shows up and you can watch your work being created live. It's kind of fun. But each one of these comes with a mat, with an inch and a quarter mat. So I use inch and a half inch, one and a half inch tape all the way around, and then I'll cut a one and a quarter inch mat as well. And that'll leave me a real nice crisp like quarter inch bleed all the way around between the mat and the artwork. It'll look real nice. While we are getting this taped up, might as well go over one other aspect of the channel and that is starting next week we are changing our time frame so this week we'll finish off the way we've always done with the today, the last day of the 11.30 live streams. And tomorrow and Friday will be the last of the 9.30 p.m. live streams. Following that, next week, we'll be starting going live every mo Monday through Wednesday. We'll be going live at 10.30 in the morning. And we'll be going live on Thursdays. 7:30 in the evening now they're all central times but if you are looking for the friday live streams we're going to be hit or miss on the fridays so friday if i do go live we'll be going live same thing at 7 30 p.m but fridays are a very, very difficult day for me to go live so that'll be give and take we're going to call that a bonus day so um, if i'm live on friday bonus but i will try to go as many as i can but just uh, having two young kids, both in sports, and the summer's coming on, and Friday's kind of the day my wife gets off work and we like to do things as a family, and the Fridays, they get wrapped up pretty quickly with family activities. And then one other thing before we actually start drawing here, let me switch, let me switch over my cameras and turn off my little timer here. All right, so one other thing, and that is, if you've not entered for your chance to win this piece, this is from episode 23 of the live streams. You want to see it being created. With this is going to be our giveaway. We have officially, as of yesterday, hit 100 subscribers. We have 
met our first benchmark and I'm giving away a piece of work. So if you'd like to own an original of mine or just want to help support the channel, then you can make sure you subscribe to YouTube. That the rules are you have to be subscribed. So you gotta be one of my subscribers. And then you'll jump over right below me here to stinkyrobotart.com. And over on that website on the homepage, there's entry form for you to fill out for the contest. I will be taking entries until Sunday, April 10th. And then we'll be drawing Monday, April 11th, live on live on the, web, um, the live stream here. We're gonna do the drawing for it and so you can see if you won. So, and I'm thinking about doing another little surprise that around Monday as well to go with it. But, but make sure you get your entry forms in for your chance to win the Rusty live stream number 23. So this could be yours. Make sure you get over there. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to enter the contest. Go over to the website and you can enter over there at stinkyrobotart.com. And you can see here, I'm gonna pull it back one more time. This is the mat. Uh, so this has already been matted. So each one of these comes with a, with a nice inch and a quarter mat all the way around. So all you gotta do is grab a frame and a piece of glass and drop it in and you've got yourself a new piece of art for your wall. Okay. That being said, let's put the clock on, guys, and let's get started. We are officially live and ready to work. There we go. And I need a pencil. There we go. Which way am I having looking? Yeah. Maybe up into this direction. See, that's a little bit of a neck breaker. Maybe not. Stream on our angle here. But these are just lightly trying to figure out lines I want to use. There we go. Using real simple shapes right now, just kind of boxing in. Getting a little bit scratchy. Fine. Real good. Big square head. Now, yeah. okay, let's clean that up a little bit. I think I've got a bit. All right, so that's kind of our shape we're going to go off of today. We'll see if we can give a reason for his head to be turned the way it is. We're gonna go with dramatic pose. It's dramatic pose day.
channel a little bit. Kind of sculpting our shape in right now. Doing. Using basic shapes to kind of block things in and then we'll smooth it out as we're developing the piece. Get it myself. Basic neck. Might be one of those solo live days. If you're checking out the channel and want to say hi, welcome to join the chat. just found this channel or have you been here before hit that thumbs up button let me know you're here let me know you found me and as always join the subscriptions if you want to be under that contest to win the piece of art here next week make sure you got your entry forms in his head tilted why does he have his head tilted that's the question isn't it Let's see if we can't figure something out uh, gotta give him personality they gotta... the most successful drawings I have is if I can find a way to give a subtle personality to my robots and way more successful.
Small, round, innocent looking guys. Aha. I think I know where we're going with him today. Check this out. This, this is gonna look Give him a hole in the head. Turn him into a birdhouse. Birdhouse. I like it. Something different. Just kind of have fun with it today. Yeah, just gonna have fun. somebody what's going on tank bit of a slow one today no oh, and I shot you an email well tank if you get to check it a second take a look at that is off. Easy fix. Hey, there's... Hey, what's up, Stace? There you are.
<laughs> He's completely random today, for sure. fun today. Let's see. Feeling like my roof line is a little skewed. That's better. Do I even need the center line? Yeah. Not really. Let me just get rid of it. I always do center lines in my robots, but it is not necessary on today's drawing. I'm just gonna get rid of that sucker. Looks like we're probably gonna need to stick a bird on the shoulder. If I can come up with a quick, easy little bird. Time thing.
All right, we're turning him into a birdhouse now. Okay. Work. Good. Just leave it a basic hole. Just leave it a basic. All right. You don't want to overthink it too much. <clears throat> yep. Then we'll come in here and we'll add some swirls and some wood pattern to it. And yeah, that's definitely going to be a wood tone. Now we need to do a bird. Get a little bird sitting on each shoulder here. really windy day here and I, something just went boom in my house that did not sound good <laughs> whatever that was something crashed Just a generic bird.
That's not a bad looking bird. Just trying to do something simple and quick. something I can add to him. Colored throat, maybe. I'm just piddling right now. I'm just kind of Trying to make the bird look a little more realistic. I mean, it's just one out of my head. I'm not using any references, so. Just from memory, trying to remember what a bird looks like. Oh. You're in a generic looking bird. That will do. our sketch for the day we are working on the birdhouse still haven't made it to the store to buy more pens so let's cross our fingers we got another day out of this one <laughs> I mean I can always switch to a slightly larger pen it's just I prefer to do the outlines in the three that is not a rule it's just what I like to do. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? At 28 minutes. We did under a half hour for the sketch. That's not the worst. I've done better, but that's not the worst. You know, for fun, we're going to kick like this. Pull this panel out a little bit. I like it. Just like it kind of sticks out. Key to the wood is the imperfection. So we're gonna have it just kind of really squiggly lines and a bit shaky, nothing perfect. We don't want perfect right now. This. Go for some thicker areas. We'll just color in black, like almost like little gaps in the wood. And 
Pinocchio Bob. What's up, Jason? Yeah, he's a bit Pinocchioed. Hey, and WT, you're in here as well. See ya. Had a slow start, but looks like everybody's showing up. So, welcome, welcome. Glad to see everybody's in here. time just a little bit here on this wooden detail. I want to make I want to make sure it looks good. Is that the feature on this one that's gonna make it or break it kind of deal? No, well, it's worth it taking just a little extra time. Making sure my lines are nice and crisp. Yeah, I'm finding that just the more confident I'm getting on this channel, the, the more I'm allowing myself to have fun, there my work's looking. You know, adding a little extra time definitely, definitely helps. I think that when I was doing the one, the, you know, a little over one hour ones, which they're a lot of fun, but they're rushed so, so quickly that they... They're, they're not staying out as much as I wanted them to. But by letting myself to have a little extra time on the clock, relax a little bit. Uh, they're, just, they're looking way stronger. I honestly feel like they look way, way stronger. But yeah, this one's pretty awesome. Yesterday's turned out really good. I really, really like the way yesterday's turned out. How's your work looking in our tank? I know you were working on your, your gouache piece yesterday. How's it looking?
You know, Jason, if you want to, next time you're in Kansas City, you know, I got a spot right over here. We can sit you down. You can join us in the live stream and see what you can come up with. I welcome you to draw on the spot. You can be my guest artist for the day. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I should probably do that on the stream one of these days. I've got I did a few charcoal pieces not too long ago just for fun. Um, it may not have been the best stuff I've done in a while. The yeah, I think I got a video up on YouTube of me doing one using the charcoal pencils. I used to love doing charcoals. Charcoals and Conte's were one of my favorite mediums back in the day. Did a lot of that in college. There was one time, I, so I was in college and I was right between semesters. I had a bunch of um, a nudes that I had done. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll read that real quick. I got you, Tank. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of... I, I love... Anyways, but back to the story. I did a lot of these... Um, I broke college, kid. I was moving from one place to the other place. Um, I was moving out of a house. I had all these really big, like, 24 by 36 inch nudes that I had done with my, with my girlfriend at the time. I had all these big nudes, and uh, she... I had about, oh, I think six of them, I think. So six of these large, and I done them in a charcoal and Connie crayon. They were really neat looking at. They were pretty impressive. So I done these of her, and I put them out to. Um, there's a coffee shop in Lawrence. I was at KU, and I was at coffee shop in Lawrence that they they showcased artwork and they sold the artwork in there. So I, I went in there and talked to them and said and showed them what I had. And they're like, oh yeah, we'd love to put that up. So I went out. And uh, I was in between houses, so I had to be about a month gap where I was leaving one house. And before I could move into the other house, I had about a month, and it was summer break. So I thought, you know, I'll just run home. And I went back to, back to my hometown for about a month. But I went out, spent a fortune, got each one of them framed up, looking nice. Frame, glass, the whole nine yards, spent a couple hundred dollars, getting them to look really good. And I took them in the coffee shop and uh, turned them in. The guy was beside himself, like, oh, these are really, really cool. I love these things. He went on and on and on. I felt really proud. Like, this guy really likes my work. How awesome is this? And he just went on and on. I was like, cool. So I dropped off my work. And then I literally would drop it off when I was leaving town. So I dropped it off. And I got in the car with all my stuff packed up. And I headed back to my hometown. And came back to Lawrence about two weeks later. So I thought, I'm going to swing to the coffee shop and see my work on the walls. I was really excited to see it. And I walk in. There's no artwork. I'm like, well, where's my artwork? Asked around, they're like, oh no, yeah, we don't have it. And then had the workers, they were checking all the back rooms, the storage and all that. Couldn't, where in the world is this artwork at that I spent all this money on? I was kind of freaking out. Well, come to find out, the guy, who was, a, he was the manager of the place that loved my work so much, it was his last day at work. He was moving to Michigan or something like that. I think it was Michigan. 
somewhere up north he was moving to. And yeah, he loved my work so much, yeah, he took it with him. My work went in the front door, out the back door, into his car, and he took it to Michigan. Or it all vanished. He just no idea where it went. I and mean, that was my very first art show. <laughs> That's how my very first art show went. Spent a few hundred dollars, just my work to get stolen. But yeah, they were uh, charcoals and uh, Connie Crayon. I mean, it's nice that someone likes your work like that. They're willing to, st to steal it. There's some pride in that, I guess. You know, the worst part about it though, Jason, the part that sucked the most, is I was a broke ass college kid. Like I was broke and no money. So that money that I had spent was literally like my last dollar, my last dime. I got uh, getting all that stuff framed up. So I had literally no monies. Yeah, I mean it was it was a bit of a compliment, sure. I mean they liked it enough to steal it. And that's always the danger at showing like at bars or coffee shops is there's no guarantee. I was at a bar one time that I've I've actually shown at this bar back when I was showing at bars and stuff. And uh, talking to the guy, the artist that was having his show that day, he was having his his uh, his, guy, his little show in that bar that day. So I got talking to him, showed him my work, he showed me my his and. We were talking, he's like, oh, let me go show you what I got. And he took me, showed me a few paintings, we went in the back room, and uh, there was a gap, and one was missing. And he was freaking out, like, oh my god, they stole it. And yeah, someone had just taken it right out the wall, right out the back door, and stole it right out from underneath him at the day of his show. That part really sucked. Not sure what happened. I told him to go talk to the owner because I knew the owner of the place was like that. He's he's responsible. That this his his club has got stolen right off his wall. No idea if that ever came to anything. If he got the money for it or not, but I hope he did. Awesome. 
kind of fiddled with this idea before a few times. I've sketched this up a little, and I've never actually completed a work of art. But I got plenty of sketches where this is kind of the concept of the birdhouse. This is the first time I think I've ever actually followed through with this concept. And I like it. This is actually pretty, it's turned out pretty, pretty good. I'm going drawing real slow and trying to get really precise lines. Get a bit of death grip. Oh, okay. Hands got to cramp a little bit. Now I got left to do is draw the bird on here. Good to go. Oh, he's got some big old hips on this bird. Hippie bird, I guess. Old hip. I think. Moving on. Do a quick erase. Let's grab some colors. Let's bring this thing to life, shall we? Pinocchio Birdhouse. All 
our Pinocchio birdhouse. Now, what are we thinking of a background? Mm. Yeah, some very, very light blue. Turquoise. Very, very light. No, let's go turquoise. Let's change the color just a little bit. This would not be a full background. I'm just gonna do a very, very light kind of background in there. A little here, a little there. Super, super light. And we're gonna stay extremely subtle today. Background. We're gonna be very detailed in the woodworking in his face. So let's let that part shine. Leave everything else pretty subtle. Pre-wash, as always. Again, if you have watched me for the very first time, I use the pre-wash here that just kind of wet the paper down a little bit so that when I put, whenever you want your work, your ink to just flow, in nice, wet, the wetter the surface, the more it's gonna to wanna to just take off and see that flow. Even lighter, I wanna be very, very subtle. Pretty much just a ah, main brush. Pull some of this back off. Like I said, that's almost too much. We're gonna really water this thing. Literally just about like that. And that should be all I want. Start off with the Mr. Bot. Will the woodwork last? And we're gonna use a little indigo and a little light blue. We're gonna use both those colors in the shadow of this one. Start off here with 
with a light blue. Well, I was, let's see here. I was gonna go highlight shadow, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna shadow the bird. No, nah, that's fine. We'll be right. We'll be just fine. Sweet. Yeah, this one's gonna look cool. I already knew it. This one's gonna look cool. All right, we're gonna jump in here real quick and give a public announcement. While I'm working on building up my shadows here for his robot body, I wanna remind everybody out there that if you not, if you not actually enter to win this piece right here, this is Rusty from episode 23 and will be our 100 subscriber giveaway. If you want to win Rusty, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and then jump over to my website, which is linked right there below me, stinkyrobotart.com. Jump over to my channel, right on the homepage is an entry form. Make sure you fill it out. Deadline to get your entry in is going to be Sunday, April 10th. We will be doing a drawing live here on the channel Monday. April 11th, see who wins that live stream art. So make sure you get your name in to the drawing if you have not done yet. And do keep in mind that Monday when we go to do the drawing for the live stream with Monday will be the first day of the new hours, in which case we go live on Monday at 10.30 Central Time. On Monday a.m. All right, let's go indigo. Now we're gonna darken it up oh, before I do it. 
just jump because I want a little less light blues in the background. Just a little bit of kind of reflection on him today. Um, oh, we're gonna make this as well metal color. So I need to come in here real quick and add some add some of this light blue right up here in the eyes because we're also gonna make this like metal color. Those little rings that go around. We need to get that in real quick. Or we... just subtly, a little bit here, a little bit there. Doesn't have to be too much. Oh hey. And... Our smokestack up there. You know what? We're gonna want that to be ah, not that blue. A little bit of that blue right in here, because this will also be a nice silver color. Just a wee little bit. Just a little bit more of this here. Not much, just, just some areas that are a little heavy, so I'm gonna add in a second layer. Other than that, it should help blue. Not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna look a little bit crisper there. Just a little bit. A little harsh of a dark blue line, but by doing that, it kind of kind of looks better. Kind of helps. All right, hour one, and we've got color in. Ooh, cool. <laughs> the lid on my indigo is already unscrewed, and I about picked that sucker up and shook it. <laughs> Ooh, that was. You guys came real close to watching a full-on live stream freak out. If I would have dumped that ink. Look at that. All over my fingers, it's all over my table now. All over the jar. It was, oh, it's all over right here. Oh boy, I made a mess. And it just about ended up all over my artwork. That, would have made for some good YouTube content, wouldn't it? Watch me totally destroy our work of art. Would have been the title of this piece. You might have seen a grown man cry. It would not be the first time I've done a full on freak out over something stupid. Hey, one second. I gotta clean this up, guys. I got ink all over my hands. I am a, I am a bloody mess over here. Jeez. Okay. Well, yeah, that was a close call. Take a deep breath and try again, shall we? Now we're adding that darker blue, that indigo in, of course, as we always. Our go-to for shadows, as many of you know. If you watched a few of these live streams, you probably almost guess what I'm gonna be doing next. And kind of follow the same Basic plat, basic path on each one of these live streams with my work, for the most part.
But that can be a good thing, especially if you're trying to push your own work. One thing I strongly encourage on this channel, like strongly, strongly encourage is, you know, especially if you if you know how to critique art or you're interested in giving me your your personal critique on on what on my body of work, no matter who you are, whether let me let me know. You know, I'm, I'm always open to critiques. I'm always open to suggestions. You know, if you think, hey, you should paint more animals, let me know. I should paint more animals. Hey, you should paint more robots. Well, I don't think it's gonna be. Thinking I don't paint enough robots, but you know, I love I love to hear the comments. I love to hear what you guys are thinking or saying about my work. Not just so that I get on, you know, that YouTube algorithm always likes the uh, comments, but I legitimately like hearing uh, what people think of my work. You know, it's more so than just trying to hit that YouTube algorithm where everybody's like, like, comment, let me know down below, do all that stuff to try to get people to comment. But I legitimately want to hear what you guys think. Any suggestions you think you have that might make my work better? By all means. Doesn't mean I'll follow your advice, but I will definitely listen to it. You know. But the only ones that I don't, I won't be listening to, you know, if you're purposely a jackass on there, then nah. I'm not going to care what you have to say. But if you have a critique that may not be necessarily the most positive thing, don't hesitate. You know, just, just be honest with me. Hey, I, you know, I like this, but you, you know, I'm not so sure I like this part of it or that part of it. You know, by all means, let me know. Give me suggestions. I, you know, that part seems a little weak. You could try doing this technique next time. Or, you know, that's how I will grow as an artist. I've had a lot of critiques throughout my career. And because of those critiques, you know, some of them have, have completely changed the way I work and have, for the better. One of the reasons I love working with my buddy Joe. Joe is a good friend of mine, artist friend that he will be here tomorrow running prints. We we have some uh, supplies that we share. He's a local, he's a local tattoo artist. And I'll tell you what, he um, he does not hesitate <laughs> to tell me when something I do is crap. I almost sometimes think he enjoys letting me know that that particular work is crap. <laughs> But I'd have it no other way. He's bluntly he's bluntly uh, honest, and one of the reasons we're such good friends. But don't ever be afraid of offending me here on this channel. I am a pretty hard guy to offend. As you can tell, we're always just building that shadow up. What do you got here, Stacy? This is another one that gives me a kid's book story ideas. If I write it, will you illustrate it? The goal of mine someday. Maybe. Never say never. You write it, I'll take a look at it. Just remember, if we do that, Stacy, like a 90-10 split, 90 me, 10% you, right? That's, that's just, that sounds fair.
I'm wondering what color I should make this bird. I haven't decided yet. I have not decided what he'll be. Too much shadow. Right over top of that end. White or gray, that'll clean that up. Got a little heavy on uh, that color. All right. Shadow up there. A little bit around those eyes. Finish him off real quick. Get him to a point where they're gonna say the robot is body at least is finished up. And we'll concentrate on working on this birdhouse and the bird last. Pretty sharp. I'm trying to get the water issues right. I get too much water and the ink just disappears. Okay, now we're 
pop this gray in a few other spots. Now the main part is all this detail work here, but now that that's done, I can just kind of randomly wash some, some of this gray in, especially around here where the color is at. Try to go a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, kind of mix these two colors in together. Right up here near the shadow line, pull that shadow out just a little bit in some gray. Need to hit behind those rivets real quick. Oh, we got all this color out. Sharp blue. Shadow side of these rivets now. Just like so. And the white, of course. Finish it off with a little bit of splash of white. Then that quick and easy metal tone. necessary just because I kept it clean to begin with mainly we'll just clean up that back end shadow like we always do with a nice thin line Okay, that was pretty simple. I had a, let me rub a little white in a few little layers here. Wrong brush. Wrong brush. What? No, oh, that's the right brush. Yeah, it looks better. Clean that up some.
Ah. Oh, I forgot to add a little bit of here. Get about this little smokestack. Yeah. Just like that. And maybe a little tiny white. That'll do. Aha, no, it won't. I got the eyes. Boy, I'm all over the place. Fine tuning here before we move to the next phase. Clean it up here. Three. Clean it up. Too, once we get the wood done and we get that next layer on there, they should clean up and look a lot better. So we definitely want to use some raw sienna for sure. Burnt umber. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to bring just a smidge, not very much, occasionally. We're going to bring in some of this red earth, possibly. That's an optional color. We believe we'll use it, but we will wait and find out. We're going to remove the colors now because I don't think we're going to need them and we're going to bring in the Payne's Gray. We still have to do a little bit of Payne's Gray here on him just to darken those shadows in a little bit. We'll probably do that somewhere near the end. we get close to the end. We'll, there's, we're going to touch up the whole thing again. Start to finish with the Payne's Gray. And at the finale. We we'll also need some actual straight black as well today. We'll darken the head and let's go ahead and do the hole right now. We're gonna black out. Black. Right brush. And let's go ahead and do that first.
When you get a true black, we'll probably do two passes of this color. Make sure we get it good and black. Black hole. Ooh. Sitting in my wallet. All those fax stacks of cash in my butt were starting to hurt. <laughs> You're gonna have not a single dollar in the wallet, but man, sucker's thick. I think it's about time to go through and clear out. Like, probably half that wallet can just go straight in the trash. After a few years, your wallet just starts getting to be a little, little sore. <laughs> I'm gonna take the straight black right now. Clean up some of these. Some wood grain into it really quick. Pattern. This will help here in a second when we actually start pulling out the wood itself. This will if it works out right, good. I think they look like wood tone. Nice wood pattern to you guys.
Put you in a second. All this is going to be pretty much washed over with the ink. Very little of it will actually survive. But they'll be hopefully subtle enough if I'm right. It'll be subtle enough that it'll still kind of show. There is that. Raw cyan. Million red can go wrong with bronze. Yeah, that should be on par. Yeah, that look good, tank. That look good. I'm gonna just wash this color over first, over the whole everything that's gonna be a wood tone, and you start working in. Or details and shadows. So I'll keep this fairly light. Just getting the color in there. I'm not actually painting this, I'm toning this. This whole section is going to be just toned in this color. Kind of like laying down a base. Laying down the base. Mm. Base layer. Sure, how much of this red earth I'm gonna use? Probably just a splash of it mixed heavily with this raw cyana. Just to give it some tonal shifts. And I'll come back over with that burnt umber. Oh, man, I'm getting really heavy handed with my ink there. Yeah, looks like we're right at the halfway point, about an hour and 37 minutes. I don't think we're doing too bad on the time. Wood should start shaping in here. I think it's going to take me too much effort. Famous last words. Let's see, to use this red or not to use this red? 
That is the question. Yes, would be the answer to that. So the hell is really poor. Shadow side in. While maintaining detail. Pull out our shadows now. And how our shadows need to fall. Looking fairly good. Oh, at least. Just a little bit of this darker color and just kind of lightly. I don't want to get too dark with it. Nice and I can ride around these rings a little bit that I drew in there. That'll give some definition to the wood. I get too crazy or carried away with it. Too carried away with it, it'll become too much of a pattern. And that can actually distract from the piece. 
there, don't get too carried away. We're still getting a little on the orange and red side, but I'm going to bring in some burnt umber here in just a second, and then that'll help tone the wood down a little bit. Bottom side of this nose here. Okay. Oh, you yeah, not forget. No. Tighten things up. I think I'm doing like a gray green for the roof, maybe the roof shingles. Yeah, be green. Working it in a little bit. Mm. 
Alright, sorry I'm working on details. I'm not talking right a lot right now, but got any questions you wanna say anything to jump in? I'll see if I can't respond to you. It's easy for me to get caught up in details and just start and put my nose to the grindstone. Get a little carried away, so if there's anything you wanna ask me or questions, just jump right in. I'll try to answer the best I can. the way this is turning out. I love it when a plan comes together. Um... Thin brush, and now we're gonna kind of trace over some of the line. This Necessary to trace the entire line. I'm just giving it little, little line highlights, basically. I'm not going to go over the entire line. Just here and there, just to kind of give it a little bit of line separation.
Fantastic. It's looking woody, guys. It's looking real woody. Now, I will need to come back over here one more time. Let's go ahead and do it now before I move the roof. Let's get the panes gray out. We're going to touch up the two areas and need panes gray, which is going to be a little bit down here and a little bit there. And we'll put some white highlights up in here as well in that wood. And then that part will be finished up. We're right at two hours, so I think our time frame is halfway decent. It's not like I have to go here, Payne's Gray. A lot of this is literally, you know, 60% water, 30% dark color. <laughs> I bet that looks fantastic, Kate. The cat. I bet that looks awesome. She says, I tried to draw with you guys the other day, and I tried to draw a gnome bot. And it looks like a man with a Santa mate. Let's see. Looks like a tin man. And Santa made a long, skinny Barbie. Oh no, baby. Oh, baby, I can't read. I need new glasses, guys. <laughs> Ten Man and Santa made a long, skinny baby. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna have to get a hashtag so you guys can start showing me the work you guys did. I'd love to see that. I'll do that. I'll get, I'll get a hashtag coming here like real soon. These are just subtle, subtle details. I'm gonna go very subtle. These are just kind of the light pops of a shadow line that just Help set the pieces off.
Boy, is that wind blowing outside today. Spring is officially showing up my front door outside. Who's ready for spring? Anybody? This is the year that we just, every time we turn around, another patch of snow, another patch of snow. I am ready for spring. But I would not be surprised if I woke up to <laughs> three, four inches of snow tomorrow morning either. I don't know about where you guys are at, but this year it's like 60 degrees one day, six inches of snow the next. Three days later, it's 60 degrees and snow. Mother Nature could not make its mind up here in Kansas this year. You had all four seasons last week, did you? Yeah, I think everybody did get a list note north. Everybody. Maybe, I don't know. I haven't really been watching the news or the weather lately. I've been hanging out with you guys. Thought baseball practice was gonna be canceled last night. It started raining right before we went out. Ten seconds later, or, uh, rained hard for about 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, the sun peaked out, warmed up real nice. We're like, oh, okay, it's gonna be great. We got out there to where my son was doing baseball practice, and clouds rolled right over the top. And we had like almost like a hurricane winds yesterday trying to do baseball practice. on the wood area but so stuff yeah I saw that WTV also said that that they had tornado damage you're on there WT how about how's your house doing I know you said you had tornado damage how bad did your house get it
Not sure if WT is still on here or not. Adding some white in here to help kind of pit. Just a little bit pop our pattern out. Now, of course, I'll get that bead of white going on the back side as well. this chin here go with nice crisp white line try not to stick my hand in this said white line while it's still wet do that quite a bit but I'm working so quickly here and sometimes I don't allow the ink to fully dry and I just slap my hand right up in it Wash it in first, get a nice light wash. Same thing I did like I did over here. We're gonna do that with the shingles now. Green color. In a few areas, a little white there, just kind of pop, poke out a little bit. 
darker, or it only seems. Black is so now it just goes straight green. <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. out. It's clogged. I kind of like that random pattern. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to go with this gray. I was going to, well, yeah, maybe I'll highlight it, maybe to see. Make an attempt here. I wonder how this is going to look, but we'll make it. It'll splash it with green to the gray. Okay, that's not too bad. Not bad, not great either. I'm gonna kind of leave it gapping just the way it is. Come over here with some dark. Dark indigo here, and add a few little just like that. With these elements, we can just keep this roof fairly simple. I don't think there's any reason to really go hyper detailed with it at all. I'd say that looks pretty darn good just the way it is. I believe it. Just like that. Maybe just a touch of yellow to that green. That might. Just a, just a smidge. 
bright yellow. That worked out nicely. Bring in that white. Make sure we got a nice crisp outer line. Now we got this little bird. I think we're just gonna do the sparrow color. It's kind of the wood pattern color. I don't wanna go crazy, like in bright red or bright any colors. We're gonna keep a nice and kind of a neutral palette. So let's re revisit some of my other colors. Soak in the blue. Indigo is done. We're not going to have a bluebird, so indigo can go away. I don't mind using a little yellow. Maybe I'll just, uh, just yellow in just a little bit. The key of the bird is going to be leaving a lot of the white space for highlights, right? And then working our other colors in. Should I use the red earth? Maybe. Maybe a little red. Pretty much a dry red end. We're there. Just a little red end to him.
All right, this is tricky not to overwork the bird. Small birds this color. Boy. I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Making a bird, that's what I'm doing. I am making a bird. Okay. Uh, no problem. Got a yellow. Switch over to a tiny brush here. I have a feeling we're gonna have to get into the weeds on these details. Oh, that's to go. We don't want indigo, we want fans gray, right? We're digging into the weeds here, guys. Got to bring out the details of the bird one more time. to bring the highlights into that'll help and I get messy with him he's small he's weird and he's gonna get, get messy bring out the details and then and remember he's a made-up bird so don't be like well that doesn't look like a cardinal of course not it's not a cardinal or that doesn't look like an eagle well it's not an eagle either not an eagle North American wibble wobbler. <laughs> AK, he's completely made up.
Hmm. He's gonna need. I'm gonna need to bring out quite a bit of highlights on him. Make him look all right. We can do that though. No pressure. Color up here on top. much on the list. Hmm. Now we got here 228. God. And this right in time for me to get the kids get pick them up from school, so I mean, it's good. Plus, I got a dog downstairs. I can hear him pacing again. He's a big boy, so when he starts walking in circles, he thumps around. I think somebody is just about ready for his, uh... Trying to go out. He's also my little alarm. He lets me know when it's time to get the kids, because that's his favorite thing in the world. And it's his time of the day when we... We get kids. He sets his clock. He, he's got that internal clock he sets. Well, about 2.30, he starts pacing. He's ready to go get kids. Yep, that is his moment to shine. Okay. 
Looking pretty decent now. We yellow in here. White. I have a Greyhound. We have a retired Greyhound. He ran for the first, he raced for the first three and a half years of his life, and then he retired. We've had him ever since. He used to be a really quick dog. Now he just thinks he is. <laughs> he used to be something to watch as he ran, or he when he ran in the circles in my backyard and. Watching him when we first got him, and he went back to his prime. He'd do zoomies in our backyard. And you're like, oh, every dog does zoomies. Except for his zoomies, you watched your grass, like, spray behind him, like, looks like a speedboat going in water, except for that's your lawn. And you're like, oh! Every year since we've had him, we gotta lay down fresh seed in the spring and the fall, because he just tears our backyard up. He goes for it though, he still does. He just, he's pushing 12 years old, he'll be 12 this summer, and he's, he's not as quick as he used to be. We've had to pull back on the walks and stuff, and he, uh, he just gets a little overworked anymore. Overheats it pretty easy, and, but you know, he's an old guy. 12 year old Greyhound is a, he's getting up there in age. I think their life expectancy is around uh, is 12 to 14 years. So he's getting up there in his prime. Ah. We're basically done. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of the final details and I, I look up and there's. We have not given him any eyes yet. We better fix that. Okay. About finished putting all these little touches. I could work this bird to death. But he's looking decent. He's looking decent, so. Alright, we better stop. Stop what we're doing and give him some eyes. I'm thinking, um... Go with the... What do you think, blue or red or green? All right, first person, tell me what color should do the eyes. Yep, I'm thinking of bright green. Let's do that. Too bright green and the roof is green but uh, no we gotta go red but we will I want to go play off that green on the roof so we better do the opposite yeah, hey tank there you go and tank says red so you are right let's do red
boy i am a little backwards today i gotta stop what we're doing i rewind shadows are on this side of the eye Whew. the highlights light is coming from the other direction i've been doing a lot of um light sources coming from right to left or sorry left to right today we did right to left I almost tripped myself up a little bit. We need to make sure we change the direction and have it coming properly. Otherwise, we'll look real awkward there. more white Not that brush though, we want to go nice and Yeah. 
That's it. I think we are finished with this piece, guys. Make sure there's a little bit of paint gray, just a little tiny bit. Right here. We're done. We have a birdhouse robot. A big old hole in his head. Fine, and be done. Two hours and 41 minutes on this drawing, so we're just right at that three hour mark. Here, that pen is not doing that's not healthy. I'm about to go through and start checking my pens. Fixed my signature here. Didn't like how the tip of my L was cut off. I accidentally tapped the tape there, so let's fix. Finished with the birdhouse piece. My split screen here, guys. What do you think? It turned out pretty good. I'm liking on this one quite a bit. My board has slipped over. Look at that. I might have it centered at these marks, but okay. Turns off a little bit on that. Do a lot of these live streams and things shift around. Anyway, so there it is. Birdhouse is completed. I'm really happy with this project. I'm ecstatic about this project, actually. I've been doing some pretty decent three-hour live streams lately. I'm liking what's coming out of these. Uh, so let's go. Quick reminder, though, before we jump out of here, that next week we will be changing times a little bit, so pay attention to and go down to the uh, down below, and I have information about next week's hours that will change. But most importantly... We are at 100 subscribers, guys. Hopefully today we're 101, 102, 110. But we are at over 100 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, do me a favor. Reach down, subscribe, become a member here at Stinky Robot, as well as thumbs up. If you enjoy the video, if you found the video, you want to give me a little bit of love, reach down there, hit that thumbs up for me. And that bell notification will tell you every time I go live. So if you want to know exactly when we launch and go live, then hit that bell notification. But if you do subscribe to this channel, make sure you go over to my website, which is stinkyrobotart.com. Again, that's stinkyrobotart.com. And on the homepage, you can enter the contest for the 100 subscriber giveaway. And that will be this piece right here. This is Rusty. He is on live stream number 23, and he will be the giveaway this time around. So if you want to win Rusty, which is kind of our stinky robot mascot here, 
on the channel and on the website and my studio. But yeah, stinky, no, oh, stinky, huh, rusty. We'll be giving away to one lucky subscriber on next Monday, April 11th. So I'll be taking entries for the contest all the way up until this Sunday, September, uh, April 10th. Make sure you guys jump over the website, fill out an entry. I'd love for you to get a chance to own a piece of my art. Guys, thank you so much for coming by the channel. Thanks to the people this week who went on the website and actually purchased a print or something like that. Those are getting out to the mail right to you now. We have that shipped out today. Guys, you're awesome. I love it when you stop by. We'll see you tomorrow night. We're going live at 9.30 Central Time. Bye, guys.